In today's episode, we go over, do I need surgery for my torn rotator cuff with orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Sean Rocket. Welcome to the Fitness Pain-Free Show, where I help physical therapists learn how to get their clients out of pain and back to training in the gym. My name is Dan Pope, and I'll be your instructor. I'm a physical therapist, coach, and fellow meathead. I love training just as much as you do and want to help you get all of your patients out of pain and back to the gym where they belong. So first and foremost, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. You allow me to do what I love for a living. My name is Dan Pope. I'm a physical therapist, coach, personal trainer, and meathead. I love fitness. I love lifting weights. This is the Fitness Pain-Free Show where we help coaches and physical therapists like you get your patients out of pain and back to training. If you are watching this on YouTube, please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to the podcast, please give a five-star review. It's much appreciated. So if you want to go that extra mile and support the channel even further, please consider subscribing to my premium membership, Fitness Pain for Insiders. It's a comprehensive educational resource and toolkit for the fitness and rehab professional. So I think Netflix, but for trainers and physical therapists. It's premium content from yours truly. I make all the content on there. And it's similar content to the show, but way more in depth. It's updated monthly. I've been updating this thing for the past five or so years, and there's a lot on there. There's 100 plus webinars, ebooks, and complete guides. You also have access to a private Facebook group to have all of your questions answered by me. You also get a chance to decide upcoming podcast topics. So if there's something you really want to learn more about, hear me go in depth about, let me know. I can do that. And you can get started for just $1 for a week-long trial. And after that, it's a recurring membership of $9.99. All right? You can cancel at any time. All right? I won't be uh, upset if you do. And if you want to get started, all you need to do is head to fitnesspainfree.com, click on the programs link, and then click on the Fitness Pain-Free Insiders Online Library and get started. So first, our expert is going to be Dr. Sean Rocket. Now, I was really lucky to have Sean on the podcast because he is the head orthopedic surgeon for CrossFit HQ, and he's been the head surgeon for, I want to say, almost 10 years now. I think 2012 um, is when he was first um, appointed to that position. He's been rated as one of Boston's top docs several years. He actually trains CrossFit, so he goes to the CrossFit gym and trains there. He's been doing that for years, and um, he's a proponent of CrossFit, which I think is great. You don't find too many surgeons out there that really like CrossFit. Uh, if they do like CrossFit, oftentimes it's because it, it drives revenue is what they'll say, right? Because CrossFit hurts people, right? Kidding, kidding. Uh, I've been collaborating for years with Dr. Rocket. We've kind of been sharing patients. I, uh, I love bouncing ideas off of him, uh, seeing what the surgery was like. He's always very responsive. I get to text him, email him, just a, just a good guy in general, right? He is my uh, trusted local surgeon. So if I have a CrossFitter that has a problem that I think that may require some surgery, he's going to be one of the first guys on my list, right? So that's awesome. Uh, the other piece is he has a great website that uh, has a lot of great information there. 321gomd.com. Make sure you check it out. And without further ado, let's get this thing going. Dr. Rocket, thank you for being on the show again. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you. Doing great. Doing great. (laughs) We have another fun question tonight. Sounds good. And the question is, when should you repair a torn rotator cuff? Now, before we get into this, uh, a lot of listeners we have here are coaches, a lot of physical therapists, medical providers. And I think there's, it's, it's good to have a little context here and have a why. Why do we ask this question? Well, uh, quite simply, I, I actually think there's a lack of knowledge from physical therapists. And I hate to throw my profession under the bus. Um, but, I mean, there's this idea, right, that's floating around the social media world that everybody has a rotator cuff tear. You have one. I have one. It's not a big deal. There's a lot of asymptomatic ones. And we know this, right? That's something that you'll find. Although rotator cuff tears are not common until we start aging, right? And especially not full thickness ones. Um, But because of that, I think what happens is physical therapists will say, um, oh, you have a tear, not a big issue. Let's do physical therapy, right? Don't worry about it. Not a problem. Um, They maybe think that, you know, they have a big ego. PT is best. We don't necessarily need to go see a a surgeon for this. 
Um, but that can be problematic because leaving this thing go um, might not be the best thing for the patient. And I think one of the problems is that if you look through a lot of our medical literature, physical therapy is good for rotator cuff tears, no matter how big they are. They can be tendinopathy, partial tear, full thickness, massive. Usually these folks are going to get a little bit better, but is their long-term outcome best with surgery or best with physical therapy? And I think you can make a case for surgery for a lot of these folks. And I think it's important that physical therapists know when that's the case so they can send the patient to someone like yourself to get the, the most optimal care. So um, what do you think? There's lots on package there. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I think, I think if we get into the discussion of what is a partial thickness tear, I think that will clarify a lot because a lot of people think it's just the tendon pulls away and, and that's it. And it's just sitting there, but actually there's tissue. And, and I broke out some of my neighbor's uh, kids. There it is. That's great. <laughs> I, made a I made a rotator cuff. Yeah. It's a model. Some people might be listening to this on a podcast, but so, just so you know, Dr. Rocket's got a model here of a rotator oh. cuff. looks like it's made from oh, Play-Doh. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I'm sorry. So there is, there are some people on the radio. Uh, no problems. <laughs> but, uh, so what we have here is a cuff and say, this is the front, the supraspinatus. This is the, this is the front muscle. And then you have the tendon attachment and this distance is the attachment is you know depending on what study or who you look at it's 12 millimeters to 16 millimeters wide and a partial tear a small partial tear is if you see this here there's a little piece of tissue that pulls away and the biceps is usually the thing that travels right next to that thing and so anytime Can I bring you bring that up dr rocket there, right, you there we go. so here's the biceps tendon and when you contract that piece of tissue can flip in and around the biceps and irritate the biceps. The other part is that it can, when you contract your tendon, you pull down, it's like having a little marble in your shoulder joint. When it contracts, it, it's, there's a little nub in there that, that hurts. The reason I know this is I've had people who have had an MRI, they've had a small partial tear on their MRI, everything else looks fine. I'll go in and I'll see that. And I'll just take a little shaver and I'll go and I'll take that partial tendon away, partial tear away. Within a week, they come back and they go, oh, my God, thank God. That was great. <laughs> so it's literally a little like, piece. A, like a little piece of mechanical tissue that is hurting. So it's not the structural. It's not the fact that they still have 80 percent of their tendon left. They're fine with 80 percent of their tendon attached. They're, they're normal almost. It's the fact that that little piece was irritating and mechanically rubbing in their shoulder. So that is a small partial thickness tear. So when everybody says do not operate on a partial thickness tear or do not operate on a small partial thickness tear, I have dozens and hundreds of people that I've done that procedure on and they feel bad. Within a week, they come back literally within a week and they go, oh, that's great. Yeah. Then you get into a significant partial tear and a significant partial tear is say I scooped out, you know, 90% of the tendon and you get just this veil of tissue. There's a veil of tissue hanging on. And so then I think you're getting into that's a significant and it's almost, you know, you could almost see through it. That I think is painful because of the traction that is occurring from the normal tissue onto the bad tissue, that the bad tissue is getting pulled and there are nerve endings in there. And I think that's what's hurting. So that's what we talk about as a significant partial tear. And then you can have, there we go, I put a poke hole through it. That's a small full thickness tear. And so that hurts because you know this tissue, number one, some of this tissue can rub up in the bursa. And the other part is it pulls, but it's pulling on other health, it's pulling, but it's pulling on other healthy tissue. And when it pulls on healthy tissue, then you get into that's progression of a tear. All right. So, very good. So progression of a tear is the big issue. And okay. so as you, as you said, when do we, when are we worried? When are we concerned? When do we say therapy, you know, keep going to therapy. All small partial tears should have therapy and should not be operated on. That's, a blanket statement. Most partial tears, even if they're significant, should have therapy, should, you know, try strengthening, should have conservative treatment. 
the question comes in, what if there's a small full thickness tear or a large full thickness tear? If it's a normal person, not, I'm sorry, if it's a, you know, a young person with trauma and they have a sudden acute tear that they pulled their rotator cuff off, that person should have surgery. If it's a, somebody comes in with chronic shoulder pain and you find a full thickness tear and it's small, that person should have conservative management. And you could operate or you could follow that tear over time to make sure it doesn't unzip, doesn't peel away. If you have a large acute cron, I'm sorry, a large acute tear, like a two centimeter, three centimeter, two tendon, three tendon tear, that should be put back because of the disability that can occur in the future. Very good. Um, and just so the, the listeners are aware, the major concern that I've kind of learned from reading and from folks like yourself is that if you have a rotator cuff tear, it generally progresses over the course of time, right? And what's a little bit tough, go ahead, Dr. Rocket. Larger tears are more concerning to progress faster or, you know, quicker progression to, to tear. For sure. So at least as a physical therapist, in my mind, when someone comes in and they have a rotator cuff tear, and let's say it's a full thickness tear and they don't want to do surgery, I'll often tell them like, we need to be a little cautious here just because we know these progress over the course of time despite what I do from a physical therapy perspective, maybe I can make a change. I don't know. I don't even know if we have the research to support that. Um, so then there's this kind of wait and see, right? <clears throat> yep. So how often do you recommend folks go back to get some sort of imaging or is there a criteria? Like if you have a new onset of pain, um, or something else is occurring like weakness, when do you recommend people go back to get more imaging after your initial evaluation? Yeah, I, th I think um, it's, you know, I have plenty of friends who, you know, they have small full thickness tears and they're like, you know, I want to wait and see. And I say, okay, come back. Why don't we say six months, uh, come back and, and we'll re-image you and make sure that you're not progressing because of if it progresses and you get changes in the muscle, like the fatty changes, and muscle atrophy, and those are the things that we're trying to prevent, then that sometimes is not reversible, and that sometimes doesn't get better. And there are certainly plenty of people who have said, come back and see me, please, and they don't. And two to three years later, they come back because now they can't move their shoulder very well, but they thought it was just sleeping on it wrong for a couple of months. Those people have progressed to the whole Two, th two tendon, three tendon tear. Yeah. Uh, without even knowing, silently. That's the, tr that's the tough part. Mm -hmm. There are definitely people who progress with symptoms, but I've, I've seen, and these are the people who I just, you know, you shake your head, and these are the people who you wish came back and listened to you, and those are the ones that progress silently. And, and that's trouble because you go in there and you try to reattach, and it's shriveled, shrunk, and cement like, and, and you can't, you can't move it. Yeah. So you can't attach a cement back to bone. Uh, not, not yet. I, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. I got my chisel. Um, so that's the problem. It dehydrates, it loses its elasticity and you, you get what's called a rotator cuff arthropathy where you get the ball rubbing up against your acromion bone and that's arthritis and the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. And, you know, just so the listeners know, if you have someone that has multi-tendon retracted tears, can't be repaired, what kind of surgeries can you get at that point, if anything? Yeah. So then you're, well, so here's the other part, you know, everybody, you know, people will show up with an MRI and it'll show there are fatty changes. There's a retracted tendon and there are, there is muscle atrophy. I have certainly you know, counsel those people. If I go in there, I might not be able to reattach it. And there are definitely people who I'm, I'm pre-op, you know, thinking there's no way I'm going to be able to reattach this. There are definitely people who I've been able to reattach it. Again, with mild fatty changes and mild atrophy. If it's severe, I'm, I, you know, I can pretty much predict, but I've definitely been surprised by some people. 
uh, who I've been able to reattach and they've done well afterwards. That's the question. If you reattach a muscle that is fatty changes and atrophy, are they going to function normally? They're, they're starting off with, you know, behind, behind the eight ball, but there are certainly people that can return to function better. Um, okay. But the goal is not to get there. You don't want to get there if you can avoid it. Yeah. And I imagine this is not necessarily something that's occurring in a young fit population, but it's something that may occur down the line. If you don't do the right thing, if you have a, you know, a 30 to 40 year old that has a cuff tear, large, full thickness, they don't want to do surgery gets worse. So their fifties and sixties, yeah. and then maybe they're at a point now where they need a reverse total shoulder replacement because they don't have any cuff tendons left. Um, that's not a fun conversation to have with anyone. I'm sure. Yeah, no, so that's the bailout. The bailout is the reverse uh, shoulder, and that's a shoulder replacement. And again, you're not, you don't want to do that in a 50 year old or a 60 year old. You know, if you can avoid. Yeah, it. yeah, it's kind of kind of sad. Um, all right, um, and you know, honestly, we we already answered some of these questions, mm -hmm. um, but let me just reiterate, and then maybe we'll kind of go deeper here. It sounds like if someone has an acute injury, so they have a fall, you know, maybe they lose weight behind them, pop they have a rotator cuff tear. It's a cute yeah. it's a slam dunk to do surgery for those. Just, just call, call, the, call the gang and warm up, the, warm up the lights. Uh, yeah, that, that is, that is a no brainer, I would say. Okay. Very good. Um, and in terms of these chronic kind of degenerative tendons, yeah. uh, we want to try, if it's a partial, we probably want to be as conservative as possible. If it's a small yeah, then, full again, thickness, no rush yeah. with the partials. There's no rush because it's attached. You don't, there's no, you're not losing anything, you know, cause it's not going to retract. Very good. Um, for the smaller full thickness in a younger individual, uh, we probably want to watch it closely over the course of time. Is that what you're recommending for those? Uh, if not fix it, you know, younger person, 40, 50, I'm leaning towards fixing a full thickness tear. 70, you know, 65, 75 full thickness. I am okay with watching a small full thickness tear. Okay. And again, it comes down to symptoms. If they've tried physical therapy, if they've tried cortisone and that's debatable too, whether or not a cortisone will actually help them or not. Um, but if, if it's a year and they're in pain for a year, then yeah, then it's a re it's certainly a, a very reasonable thing to do to, to fix okay. a full thickness, 65, 70 year old full thickness tear. Okay. And then it sounds like, um, as this full thickness tear gets bigger, it's just more and more of a reason to get that repaired, especially in a younger person. Yeah. Especially in a younger person. Yes. Okay. Very good. Now we're using this word young versus old. And I think when people think of like fitness pain free and what we do, when we think old, um, we're seeing folks that are very fit and strong and active and they're in their fifties. Um, but sometimes a 50 year old in, you know, the rotator cuff world is going to be viewed as someone who's really young, right? right? Um, in the rotator cuff world, what, what constitutes a young individual and what constitutes an older individual? Is there a cutoff mark in terms of age? I mean, there's, you know, you have physiologic youth and you have, you know, you know, real, real youth, um, there are, you know, there's, if you go into a CrossFit gym and you see, you know, 70 year olds, there's probably a lot of people who are acting like 40, 50 year old, but I, in a rotator cuff world, just in general, 40 year old is a really young person to have a rotator cuff tear. Um, and, and then again, if some people are not as active, some people are not doing fitness or even shoveling snow or, you know, those are 75, 80 year olds or older people who have rotator cuff tears. Mm -hmm. And again, those people are, you're going to be, you're going to try a lot of different things first before operating on, on that. Okay. There we go. Um, that's actually all the questions I have for you. We have some other ones, but you actually covered everything pretty well. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to say before we wrap this up? Um, you know, the other one is the, the acute on chronic tear, the acute on chronic. So again, if I use my hand model, the chronic tear is if somebody is living with their tendon, say their supraspinatus is torn, they don't know it, it's pulled away from their shoulder and they don't even know that. And then they fall and all of a sudden they can't lift their arm. So they come to you and they have atrophy of their supraspinatus, they have a retraction of their supraspinatus and then this infraspinatus is also torn. Something happened to them 
something dramatic. And so usually it's the fact that the infraspinatus tore. So you have a dried up supraspinatus and you have a new infraspinatus. So the fresh infraspinatus is the reason they can't lift up their arm anymore because they lost the ability to pull on top of their shoulder. They, their rotator cuff is now below the equator and there's no attachment on top of the equator. So that's sometimes an issue when you go in, you say, yeah, you know, I might be able to fix everything, but I'll prepare people that I might not be able to fix that old supraspinatus, but I'll be able to get hopefully that new infraspinatus tear on top of your ball so you can lift your arm up again. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's a, a long discussion because people say, I didn't know I tore my rotator cuff. I never knew that. But they definitely tore it in the past and they just never knew it. So a lot of people are out there living with asymptomatic full thickness supraspinatus tears. Yeah. And so that's, that just is a, it's a, it's a complex discussion and it takes a while to, to have people understand it, but it's very common. We see a lot. Okay. Wow. So you got the acute on top of the chronic and then on now the it becomes a mess. Good times. <laughs> All right. Good. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Rocket. I always appreciate you coming on here and sharing your wisdom. So, My pleasure. Yep. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Here's what I want you to do next. If you want to learn more about how to get your patients out of pain and back in the gym where they belong, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. I've created an entire mini course on this. It's completely free. I have the link in the bio slash show notes. So go ahead and click that link and get started. Thanks again, guys.